Okay, you're good to go. Have a good session. Okay, welcome to the session for secret sharing. This session is chaired by uh, Guo Jian and myself, Masayuki Abe. We have two talks. The first one is Albatros, publicly attestable batched randomness based on secret sharing by Ignacio Cascudo and Bernardo David. Ignacio will give us a talk. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, so this is a, a paper with uh, uh, Bernardo David uh, from IT University Copenhagen, and I'm Ignacio Cascudo from India Software. Uh, this is about uh, multi-party computation protocols to create uh, randomness. So basically, what uh, we are motivated by is the notion of a random beacon that periodically outputs randomness to parties in certain cryptographic protocol. And for example, this is useful in proof of stake blockchains because you need every now and then to run lotteries to, uh, to select a leader for the next session. And what we want to do is, is to implement that in a distribu distributed way. And that's there is a guaranteed output delivery and uh, public verifiability so that we avoid uh, things like uh, happened in South Africa last week uh, where the lottery uh, had a peculiar outcome and uh, people complained. So here we will have public verifiability and, and, and any verifier can, can check that the result is, is fair. Uh, a little bit more precisely, so uh, we have N parties and uh, they can publish in some bulletin boards, like maybe implemented for a blockchain too. Um, and then there is an adversary that may corrupt up to T parties. And the parties, uh, so the adversary may be rushing, so the parties may be the last to speak in a given round. And uh, we, we, we want, as I say, guaranteed output delivery and public verifiability, which uh, will use the fact that uh, communication goes through the public bulletin board. And uh, there are different ways of implementing or these this, this, uh, beacons. Uh, we are uh, looking here at uh, beacons implemented from publicly verifiable secret sharing, which is a type of secret sharing where you encrypt, uh, I mean, you deliver the shares by encrypting them and, public, and posting them in the, in the vaulting board. And then there are like uh, proofs of uh, correctness of sharing and uh, proofs of reconstruction of the secret for the, the parties later. And um, the, the constructions uh, that um, I'm going to show now uh, that existed, uh, they, they, uh, they assume DDH in some certain group and uh, they are secure for any dishonest minority. So this. So, for example, this is not everything there is, but uh, basically, uh, so Uroboros used the VVSS by Schumachers from '99, and um, and this um, and what we want to 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 concentrate here is on the computational complexity, and uh, this beacon uh, requires uh, n cubed exponentiations per party. So, if n is the the number of parties, as I say, the the thing is uh, over a group. Um, then in, uh, in in another construction, we, we, we modified a little bit the correctness proof, or the, the, the proof of correctness for the sharing, and uh, we got uh, O n squared exponentiations per party. So what we do in this work uh, is several things, but maybe the main one is to consider the case where instead of just uh, uh, any, uh, we, we consider any uh, dishonest minority, here we consider instead that the number of corrupted parties is uh, constant times n, where the constant is smaller than one half. So we relax this a bit because this is also like motivated by the fact that uh, anyway, this is used in protocols that uh, already assume that say, for example, t is one third of n or so. And then we show that we can obtain a nice uh, computational complexity improvements and uh, techniques that we use are things like packed semi-secret sharing. But here, um, uh, one has to be careful because uh, this only uh, this alone doesn't get you the, the improvement on the complexity. You also need to, to figure out how to uh, modify a little bit the, the way that you reconstruct the secrets there. We use some tricks and so on. And then the, the other thing is that we use the randomness extraction. While previously the constructions were about, uh, well, everyone shares an element of the group and then uh, you create your output by just uh, uh, multiplying all the elements in the group. Uh, here we use uh, some uh, fancier uh, uh, structures like uh, resilient, uh, linear resilient functions. And we can compute this via fast Fourier transform in the exponent and we get the complexity improvements by, from there. 
Uh, we also have, uh, apart from this, uh, then uh, improvements like uh, a better sharing correctness, correctness proof that also applies to the case T uh, and, and, and divided by two. So also can be used in the previous uh, constructions. And uh, UC secure versions uh, based on both based on, on, on UC secure uh, NISIX for, for discrete logarithm relations, but also some uh, flavor of uh, homomorphic commitments uh, with the signature verifier. But just see the paper for more information. And just to give you like a, a little bit of uh, for the first bullet point, a comparison with previous work. Um, well, in previous work, uh, the number of exponentiations per party were all n squared or, or in cubed, but the output was just one element of the group. Now we can make um, n squared elements of the group uh, roughly uh, by most, more or less the same uh, uh, computational complexity. So the amortized complexity per random uh, output uh, created is, uh, is much better. And uh, yeah, that was it, basically. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Ignacio. Any questions from the audiences? So um, I have one question. Can you, can you be a bit more specific about the net communication model you are working on? Uh, for instance, do you require authentication on top of the bulletin board you are using? Um, yes, uh, because, um, yes, because, because I mean, you, you are going to need to, uh, at some point, for example, decrypt uh, shares. Actually, now I'm thinking, uh, uh, I mean, every, okay, so, so first of all, every party has a, a, a public key and a secret key. So, so I guess that's, that's already like, uh, and authentic authentication, right? I mean, the, the, the shares are delivered by en uh, encrypting the uh, encrypting the shares under the public key of, of the of the other parties. That uh, so basically every party will have a public key, and uh, the ith share will be uh, encrypted with the ith uh, public uh, key. So okay, yeah. and uh, in a in a UC um, case, in a universally composable mm -hmm. case, do you? Your construction is also um, um, between board hybrid uh, model, right? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, we have a functionality for the balloting board. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, questions? Other questions from from listeners? No. Okay. Thanks a lot, Ignacio. Thank Great you. talk. So um, let's move on to the second one, which is a secret shared shuffle by Melissa Chase, Asia Ghosh, and Oshana Poblinaya. Uh, Oshana will be a speaker. Thanks for the introduction. Okay, so let me describe what secret shared shuffle is first. Uh, so this is a primitive which takes as input a database X consisting of N elements from Bob. And this primitive internally uh, secretly shuffles the database and it returns to both parties the secret shares of a permuted database. And this permutation of a shuffle has to be hidden from both parties. So more concretely, for instance, if the first share of Bob is B1, then the first share of Alice has to be B1 plus X sub pi one, which means that these two shares together add up to the element, which is at the position pi of one. This way together they hold the permuted database. So why is this primitive useful? Well, it has long been used as part of a secure two party computation on set intersection. So let me say a word about this. So in this task, uh, you have two sets and you would like to intersect them and do some computational on the intersection. And it's important that the intersection itself remains hidden. Okay, so the problem is that most uh, protocols for private set intersection do not return you simply the encrypted intersection. Instead, they return you the encrypted indicator vector or basically indicator bits of whether each element belongs to the intersection or not. 
So before we use our two-party protocol, we need to perform this filtering step where we remove the elements which are not in the intersection. And secret shared shuffle allows you to do exactly that. So you, after you run your PSI protocol, you apply a secret shared shuffle, and now all your elements are A, randomly permuted, and B, they are reshared, so nobody can link the new elements to the old elements, and therefore it is safe to open up the indicator bits showing whether the element is in the intersection or not. And once this was done, then you can uh, just discard the elements not in the intersection and then run your favorite two PC. Okay, hopefully I convinced you that this is a very useful primitive. There are really many ways of how one can achieve it. Let me just talk about uh, two specific ways here. So there is a very simple solution which uses homomorphic encryption and this solution is optimal in terms of asymptotic complexity, but in practice, it doesn't do that well because it uses expensive public key crypto. On the other uh, side of this, we have solutions based on permutation networks, which are not optimal asymptotically, but they use symmetric crypto and they turn out to be actually very efficient in practice. One downside of these solutions is their communication complexity which is proportional to the size of a permutation network times the size of each element. So we design a novel approach to solve this problem. And in particular, we provide a faster algorithm, which also is not optimal asymptotically, but still it is concretely very efficient because we mostly use only XOR and PRG operations. So that's very efficient. And our communication turns out to be lower than that of permutation networks. And as a result, we actually win by a factor of 3x to 12x. And our approach becomes more and more, more and more advantage is um, the more, the larger the elements in the domain are. Okay, in some remaining time, let me mention the uh, crude idea of our work. So we look at the primitive, which we call a shared translation, which you can think of a random variant of a secret shared shuffle. So this primitive does the following. It samples internally two sets of random or pseudo-random elements, uh, set A and set B, and it sends both of them to Bob. And what Alice gets is permuted A plus B. And again, the permutation is not known. You can view this uh, primitive as a random variant of a secret shared shuffle. Uh, indeed, think about A as a random or pseudo-random database, which is out of control of the parties. It's just generated by the magic box here. Um, so A is this random permutation. And then you can think about B and permuted A plus B to be secret shares of a permuted random database A. So in this sense, this is a random variant of a secret shared shuffle. And we show two things. First, that this random variant is enough to build the full variant of a secret shared shuffle for any database. And intuitively, the, the reason why we call it secret uh, shared translation protocol is because it allows you to move or to translate from the shares under permuted A into the shares under B. Uh, and then we show how to build a shared translation protocol from punchable PRFs and oblivious transfer. And the construction ends up being very efficient communication wise, which somehow happens because all the values in this protocol are pseudo random. So intuitively there is some room for savings. Um, just to say a very high level idea uh, to build this protocol, uh, we let uh, Alice and Bob together agree on some matrix of pseudo-random values such that Bob learns the full matrix, but Alice only learns the punctured matrix. That means that she's missing one element, exactly one element, at every row of the matrix and at every column of the matrix. Moreover, the missing elements are actually placed in certain positions exactly corresponding to her permutation. Uh, and we can show that once you have this set up, you can actually implement the shared translation protocol. 
And on the other hand, we show how to efficiently, communication efficiently, allow parties to generate this matrix row by row. And to generate each row in a communication efficient way, we are using this really cool trick from the previous work by Dörner and Schillat in a different context. Uh, and instead of spending roughly complexity of n per row, we ended up spending something about like logarithm n. Okay, so that's all I have to say for today. This was a talk about secret shared shuffle and thanks a lot for attention. Thanks, Oceana. Um, any question from the audiences? Uh, um, go, is there any question on the chat board? So far, there's none. Okay, okay. Then I have one question. I see, I see your the longer version of your, your talk in the recording. And I, I see that uh, it looks that you are using at some, in, in some uh, construction of yours, you are using a permutation network. Is it right? You are uh, using yes, Ben's yes. network. And, uh, and it looks that you, uh, you set each of the network switch in a random and independent manner. Is it right? Uh, no, so we, we don't actually set them, we just, uh, so the Banish network is set up according to the permutation. Okay. But what we do is we, that we cut this uh, permutation network um, into a, a subs, in the subsets of sub permutations. And then we run the protocol I, I described on every like, small part of uh, this Banish network. And Banish network, like it's very structured. So it allows us right. to like make this sub permutations in a smart way. Yeah, right. Okay, good. Okay, um, if there is no other, no questions more. So uh, let's uh, thank